Hey, Emily here. We're gonna do a handicapping video. The Holy Bowl, it's a grade two, it's for three-year-olds. Again, another one of the prep races going toward the Kentucky Derby, um, starting here at Gulfstream Park. I wanted to talk about this race because, uh, because one, it's horses we're gonna see again. Um, we have a lot of interesting notes in here. And again, I think it's important. Um, I posted on Twitter earlier. If you haven't already, go back and watch the talking trips for the Mucho Macho Man Stakes, which goes in depth um, a little bit more of some of the horses coming out of that race. Uh, Pero Rojo, Cavill, and uh, the number four talk logistics. So I'll kind of briefly go over those, those horses, but um, a lot more in depth on their trips in that video. So go back and watch that. Um, we've got a big favorite here, Classic Empire, the number three, the green square in quadrant one, uh, three to five on the morning line. And, um, I, you know, if you look at the plot, and again, you have to keep in mind the plot for these, these three-year-old races, lightly raced, um, horses are improving constantly, um, they might have a big race that just kind of makes them look a standout or a bad race that makes them look terrible, we'll kind of get into that a little bit. Um, so it's important to kind of take that with a grain of salt, use your critical thinking, incorporate your trip notes, the grid, speed figures, pace figures into, um, into, the, into the plot here and then uh, kind of help your pace scenario. But the number three, I think this is probably, um, you know, the right plot, it makes sense. Uh, square, above that par line, you know, class of the field, um, and in a good position. So uh, looking over the grid, we'll start with that horse. Um, we're going to go to the number three. I'll kind of clear it out for now. Uh, Classic Empire. So, um, you know, really, you look at this horse, hasn't done anything wrong, right? The one race that was bad, it was an EX. Uh, we have the start, lost the rider. So, you know, just easy to draw a line through that. So other than that, this horse is, uh, you know, four for four, essentially. Um, other than, you know, early in the career, the slog slog, and then obviously um, this gate incident here, you know, a little bit of concern, but they add the blinkers um, and then came back with two B-plus efforts in grade one. So by all accounts, you know, class of the field from that standpoint, um, looking at the plot, speed figures, grades, um, he's got it all, total package, right? Other than that, you're taking three to five, which um, we want to kind of dissect and make sure, um, you know, a horse like this, is he a single or other horses that are kind of coming coming up? Um, and so the one thing I kind of noticed with this horse, um, we'll go back to Breeders' Speed Charity, you know, there's no keywords, but um, extended comment, outside stocking trip, he's two, three wide. He was on the better part of the track that day, so so pretty close to a perfect trip, you know, was a little wide, that's why we didn't write perfect, but um, pretty, pretty darn close to that. Um, you know, good field that day, came back in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, got a perfect trip that day again. So, um, you know, and again on the plot, he looks like he's going to possibly get another perfect trip. Um, if he has some adversity or, you know, these gate issues come back, I don't know. Like, that's, uh, that's kind of the question with me, and I think there's a, there's a couple other horses in here that are, that are interesting. Um, you know, again, from standpoint, looking at data, there's, there's not real big knocks um, other than, you know, what, what happens if he doesn't get a perfect trip or the, the past gate issues. So, um, you know, again, I think there's, there are a couple more horses in here that, that are interesting. Um, and one of those I highlighted in, the, um, talking, in that Talking Trips video I alluded to. Um, let's go to that horse because um, I am interested in this horse. And again, I talked about it in the video, I'd be interested in coming back and thought they would go to the Holy Bowl. Um, here he is, 15 to 1 morning line, um, definitely using this horse. You know, last time out, talked about the trip in detail, thought there was a lot more to it. Um, sixth place finish, beating seven lengths, still got a B plus, I mean B minus, B plus, uh, breaking the maiden. John Doyle doing trips that day, a lone trip, but um, horse showing gear, so a lot more upside, did more than he needed to that B plus there. Um, this is kind of where it's important, you know, you look at the plot because, you know, big square circle in quadrant one, he's got a couple horses that are faster and uh, a few other horses that seem to have a little bit more finish. Um, but you have that, you have that lightly raced horse, you know, he's got three starts to his career. Um, on the turf, uh, Belmont turf on debut, let's go over that extended comment, made a good appearance pre-race, so maybe a prep, um, you know, didn't really ride it there, again, the horse took a little bit of money, beaten, um, but came back and, and ran his race here, and then and ran another good race there, so, 
certainly the plot is taking into, into account, um, you know, a few of those races that we have trouble lines on. So I can, you know, be a little bit more forgiving, especially because, you know, we're getting 15 to 1 on the morning line. We can, we can kind of, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to look perfect. Nice when they do, but when they don't, um, we can make a case. Uh, looking at another horse, um, you know, the one, um, go to Vera, I'll go there next. This horse is 9 to 2. Um, I, I went back and I, I watched this horse's, um, this horse's races because I just kind of wanted to dissect it a little bit more. I've got it pulled up here. Um, speed figure, Wise Room's best career speed figure in 97, which um, is, I think it's just what, like a one point shorter than uh, Classic Empire, you know, or Tide, right? Both 97, okay. So that, that puts them on there. Um, B plus, warm up, burst, close, um, little late lead change on there. Um, went back and I, I looked at this horse and I'm going to kind of make a bold statement on him. Um, he'll be my this year's exaggerator that um, I think he's he's a, a one-turn horse. And I watched that race and it kind of set up like a one-turn. He made that big move, awesome move on the turn and then just um, rallied through the stretch and had pace to close out. We can see, you know, using... Um, using kind of these numbers here, how it was strong, you know, all the way through. We've got greens all the way across and, and, and came home strong weight and speed figure, which in corporate's pace reflects that. So, um, you know, going around two turns, um, legitimately probably not going to get a, a one-turn pace scenario here. Um, I, I'm going to be a little bit against this horse today. Um, yeah, won't, won't be on my tickets, um, you know, especially – playing pick four, pick five, um, not so much pick six player, but if that was the case, um, wouldn't use him there, wouldn't use him there either. So, um, I am going to possibly be wrong on that, but, um, at the price today and with some other horses in here, that's, that's the stand I'm taking. All right. Um, we'll just kind of quickly go through the number two, because he's got that prep stretch. Um, this horse just really needs to take a big step forward. I think he can. I think that uh, the extra ground will be an advantage, but uh, grades-wise, um, other than that Delaware race, pretty soft and speed vigors. I mean, we're talking this horse has got to improve 20 points. Um, that's a tall task, even with the barn going well this meet. We'll go to the number four. Um, again, this horse... Had trouble in the last, went into detail a little bit more. Um, I, I, I took the stance in that video, and I'm kind of taking it here as I'm going through the race, that I just think there's more upside on um, on the number eight. But I, I thought this horse ran a good race as well, and anybody that's going to use this horse at 12-1, to 1, I'm, I'm not really going to fault you. I don't know if he's quite on the level, but um, improving with every start. And good trying horse, had that trouble last out. Let me just click over the other. Again, yeah, that was a physical um, so that's kind of where I'm going of the horses coming out of that race. I'm going to side with the eight. Um, number five, Irish Workway. Talk about this horse because, um, speed figure wise on the improved got a 96, which is, which is right on there with those top two. Um, still this horse, you know, one, he's, uh, going to go around a route of ground. Um, a little bit of green in both those starts kind of, I think I wrote he was clumsy out of the gate the last time. Um, other than that, it looks like, you know, looks like a nice horse. Um, seems to kind of be the, the wise guy horse on, on Twitter. It's 15 to 1 again. Maybe he's going to be a little bit shorter um, on that, kind of based on speed figures, getting getting the additional Lasix for the first time. Um, on debut, we had that bias because he was on the outside part of the track, which, which was the better part of the track. Um, kind of took on two duels last time out in the Marylander Stakes. Um, yeah, again, clumsy out of the gate, a little headstrong early, kind of engaging with the early rival, relaxed, um, pulled away, and then, uh, you know, just held on on the inside to, uh, to get the win. So, horse on the improve, um, making a step forward, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little torn, I could see people using this horse, um, I, I want to see a little bit more, but, um, certainly... There's, uh, there's things to like. I believe on the plot, um, it's that big square here. So Impact TSD, not crazy about that position. But again, if you just kind of move that square up just a little bit, you know, um, we don't have him on surface distance, I wouldn't imagine, from the sprints. So again, kind of hard to say. 
yeah, over here, we don't have the information on that side. Um, I did look at this surface distance. I like to use Impact TSD. Just kind of does like a track profile where typically the winners are coming from. And for some reason, it really likes that quadrant too. So there's your four horse and, and again, the one who I'm kind of taking a stand against both. Um, but, you know, that come post time, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll change that a little bit because there, there, are, there are things... There are things that make sense. Um, maybe not so much on the one, but I might come around to the four. And just kind of scroll back through. Um, the number six, uh, what are we looking at? Morning line here, six to one. Um, best of the speed, hard gallop. So, um, you know, the hard race, we like to see that recovery time, which this horse is getting 56 days. Um, but the other suggests there's distance limitations, questions stretching out, out around two turns. So, um, at a short price, I, um, I'm going to kind of side with that note, um, tends to be pretty strong. Uh, horse was, horse was shut down shortly after the wire, a little bit of neck sweat. Um, again, the distance is the question on, on the number six here. Um, speed figure wise, you know, improving steadily, kind of right on track. Um, excessive layoff lines, not my favorite. Again, the, um, the hard last time, that makes sense. We want to see that, but, um, again, the distance is going to kind of be Question on that, um, horse is three for three on his career, um, taking a stand based on distance. The number seven, kind of like the two, um, you know, just speed figure wise, a little bit soft. We have these improves early on, you know, the turf, and then um, had a move, had a setup, um, close, no line, you know, this horse uh, drifting out, drifting out late, um, you know, 10 links clear. So, so never a threat, but um, still a B, you know, kind of moving from the maiden ranks to the graded stake race. We like to see that that B plus, um, you know, especially going from maiden to to that graded stake race. You know, here we're going allowance, it's a little bit more forgiving, but um, that's that's a big jump up, especially when you need to project this horse has to take another step forward. Um, we talked about the number eight, who I'm quite interested in, and then the number nine, who ran yesterday, will probably be scratched from this race. So, um, an interesting race. Um, yeah, that would be my contest play if the NHC was this week. Um, anywhere near that morning line, that would that would definitely be a play for me. Um, interesting race. I will go over um, this race again. We'll do a talking trips next week. A couple races um, on the program for that. Um, thanks again for following the channel. Um, I encourage comments, follow on Twitter um, at Mayhemily1, and of course Optics EQ, where all this information is in there. Um, I'll add that back in. Um, you know, I do this analysis using, you know, using the trip notes in there and just kind of reading through for you guys that are kind of getting familiar with optics, but um, all this information is in there. You can make this assessment for any race, even though the races I'm not going over there, there doesn't take additional trip work. Um, you know, of course, encouraged to go back in there, but um, trip taking is very time consuming. So um, all that's done for you is using your critical thinking, kind of putting the pieces together. You're handicapping with uh, stronger information. Sorry, a little a little side rant there. Um, thanks. Good luck playing the races today. Um, we'll post uh, post those videos next week. And uh, thanks again for watching.